Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So last time we introduced these variables or these uh, concepts of position. Vector, velocity, and acceleration. And then we started to explore the relationship between these things. So we saw that velocity is change in position over change in time. And we saw that acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So these are two equations to keep in mind. And I'm gonna show you two more and that will complete uh, what are called the kinematic equations. So So the kinematic equations are equations where you have relationships between position, velocity and acceleration. And for example, if I give you a velocity, a time, and an acceleration, you can tell me how far something is moved in that amount of time. So we've seen these two equations. So these are your first two kinematic equations. And now the two other equations. So the first one is, let's see, which one? I guess we'll start with this one first. So delta x equals the initial velocity times the time plus the one half. acceleration times time squared. And so if you are wondering where this equation comes from, it comes from calculus and you take the, so you take two integrals of this acceleration equation and you get this result, uh, but What's that? Um, so it's just a relationship between uh, position, velocity, and acceleration and time. It's a relationship between all of these different variables. So we'll see some word problems where you'll see how, how you would use these. Um, then the other kinematic equation that we have looks like this, velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2a delta x. Velocity is like dr, or is that dr? This is a bf like for, okay. for final, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so final and initial. Okay. 
And then we remember that these deltas mean x final minus x initial. Okay, so uh, another way that we can write this uh, equation here, and maybe I'll do that on the next slide. So I'll let you guys finish copying that down. So another way to write this equation is that, uh, so first we can break these deltas into V final minus V initial, T final minus T initial. Now, if you set your initial time to be zero, then and you set your final time to just be T, then this becomes V final minus V initial over time. And let's say you wanted to know your final velocity, then you would take your initial velocity times time, or sorry, your initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. And so you might see your kinematic equation written like this instead of like this, but these two are the same equation. Okay, so if you want to memorize something for this class, uh, these would be three equations to memorize. So your the kinematic equation we just wrote down, and then the other two from previous. So something that you want to take note of is that the second equation, uh, I didn't write the vectors on it this time. And that's because all of these terms uh, will come out to be scalar. So And the reason for that, uh, we'll talk about a bit later in class, but if I want to multiply two vectors together. So for example, BF squared, one way to do that is to do a special kind of multiplication called a dot product. And when you use a dot product, you put in two vectors and you get out a scalar. But like I said, this will be for later, later in class later in the semester. So for right now, just know that uh, the other two equations, everything is a vector except for the time. Uh, but then for this uh, equation that I marked as scalar, uh, when you solve for say the velocity, you, you're not getting the velocity, you're getting the speed. 
So any questions about that? Okay. So I'll come back to uh, how we use these in a second, but I wanna uh, finish up something that we were talking about last class. And that was the, uh, when we were looking at the graphs of, for example, position versus time, and then alternatively, velocity versus time. And so if you remember from last class, uh, if we have a position versus time graph and uh, we have some kind of a straight line for the relation between these two variables, then the slope of the position versus time graph was delta x over delta t, which is your velocity. And so the slope of a position versus time graph is velocity. And then if we follow that same logic, the slope of a velocity versus time graph, so delta V over delta T is gonna equal acceleration. So the slope of a velocity versus time graph is your acceleration. So now we'll show some examples of, uh, of these graphs and also how to use those kinematic equations that we uh, just introduced. And how we're going to do that is by talking about gravity. So this is kind of a first taste of gravity and we'll come back several more times this semester. But uh, to start with, we're gonna look at gravity and the caveat is that we are close to the surface of the earth. So if you're reading a word problem and it says close to the surface of the earth, uh, that's your clue that we're gonna treat gravity in a very specific way. And that specific way is that the acceleration due to gravity is going to be a constant. And that constant is about negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And if we're using our unit vector notation, then that would be in the y direction. If we're defining y as the up down direction. Okay, so this a couple things to note. So first that this is a constant. So it doesn't matter where you are on the earth or if you're on the surface of the earth or 10 meters above the earth, this, we're gonna take the acceleration due to gravity to be constant. And so when you have a constant acceleration, that is when these three equations apply. So your kinematic equations apply when acceleration is constant. And so I guess in this class, we'll 
let's define constant. So what I mean by constant is that it does not change with time. Okay, so anytime you hear or read a problem that says such and such variable is constant, then throughout the whole problem, you can just take whatever number they give you and use it all the time in that problem. And if they say something is accelerating at a constant rate, then that's your clue that we can use our kinematic equations uh, to solve that problem. Okay. So let's say you drop a ball from a height of 10 meters. How long will it take for the ball to hit the ground? Okay, so we had these kinematic equations. Let's go back to those. And you see that I wrote everything with delta x, but this also applies for delta y as well. So uh, maybe I'll rewrite those underneath the problem. So we have these kinematic equations. Okay, so these are those kinematic equations just written with y's instead of x's now. So you'll either have these memorized or uh, you'll be looking at them on your piece of paper. And now we wanna go through this word problem and extract all of the information out of it and then use that information to decide which kinematic equation we want to use to solve this problem. Okay. So first, let's just read through and look at all the things that they give us. So they tell us that the height is 10 meters. So that means that the initial y position is 10 meters in the positive y direction for j hat. Okay. Then the other thing that they give us is that we wanna know how long it will take. So we are looking for the time and then it tells us that it's going to hit the ground. So we know that y final is zero meters. Okay, are there any other variables that are stated? What's that? Yeah, right. So unless they specifically say like, how long will it take to hit the ground on Mars or on the moon or something, you'll just assume that this is taking place on the earth. 
So the acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the earth is 9.8. So even if it's not stated in the problem, you just assume that that's given to you. So uh, the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared in the y direction. Okay, so now we have four variables and we could see which equation we need to use to solve. Oops. So based on what's given here, what would you guys pick for your, like which, maybe I'll number them one, two, three. Which one should we use to, to solve for time? You can just put up a finger or two or three. One. Yeah, so some people are saying one. So that is the correct answer. But if we look at number one, so we know delta y is y final minus y initial. So that would be negative 10 meters. Okay, and then we know we're solving for time. We know the acceleration is negative 9.8. But if we look at this term here, we haven't said anything about the initial velocity, right? So this is another one of those, like the wording of the problem tells you what they expect without explicitly stating it. So if they say, for example, you drop something, drop is going to mean your initial velocity is zero. If they had instead said you throw the ball down, then they would need to give you some initial velocity for that throw. But they didn't, so... Uh, drop means your initial velocity is zero. Okay, so now if you look at uh, equation one, now we have all of the variables and we can plug them in to solve for time. So uh, let's do that. So, this is the equation that we're using. We are going to, uh, so I would recommend leaving things in variables before you start plugging in numbers. Um, and I'm going to immediately break that rule uh, by saying that this is, we know that this term is zero. So I'm just gonna ignore that but now I'm gonna leave everything in terms of variables, solve in terms of variables, and then plug in your numbers. Uh, Cause what happens is if you start plugging in numbers first, now you have to keep writing numbers over and over again, that can be tedious. And also you can, it's easy to mix up numbers when you keep writing numbers over and over, but the variables are, you're hopefully not gonna miswrite your variables. Okay, so we're solving for time. So we can multiply the both sides by two, divide by the A. And then we can take the square root. Okay, so now we have everything in terms of the variables. 
and we can plug in what we know. So we know that delta y was negative 10. We know that acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, negative 9.8. So that minus sign is important. Uh, so if I had forgotten one of these minus signs, I would have a negative number under the square root and that would be bad, right? So if you have a negative under a square root, you have an imaginary number, which is something we're not talking about in this class. So uh, kind of as a good rule of thumb, uh, everything under your square roots should be positive. So the fact that there's two negatives, they'll cancel each other out, so that's good. Uh, so 9.8 is about 10. So if I just did this math in my head, this would be about square root of two. And you can plug that into your calculator if you want, but this is one point something seconds, 1.3-ish seconds. So if you're holding a ball 10 meters in the air, which is about 30 feet, you should expect it to take about 1.3 seconds to fall to the earth. So any questions about this process? Yeah. Oh, I was just being lazy. Yeah. yeah, always feel free to call me out on my laziness. And so the the vector aspect of it comes in when we plugged in the negative 10 and the negative 9.8 here. Example problem. Let's see. So we've got, let's see if I can pick an example of where we use a different equation. So you're driving in your car. So a car is traveling how fast your car is going. Let's say 20 meters per second. And you see I don't know, maybe a car accident ahead. So you uh, begin to break. See if I can pick the right break. If you stopped in 100 meters, what was the acceleration of your brake? Okay, so again, we will uh, read through our problem and pick out uh, the different variables that are given to us. So the first thing I see is this 20 meters per second. So that would be your initial velocity. Okay, then the next thing I see is, well, there's a lot of things. So the next thing I see is stopped. And so stopped tells us that I'm no longer moving. So my final velocity is zero. 
and I guess I should be putting vectors on here. So maybe this is in the positive x direction. Okay, then I see 100 meters. So my delta x is 100 meters. And so I'm making some assumptions here. So what I'm really saying is that I'm assuming that at my initial time, I just define that to be zero meters. And then my final time, at uh, my position at the final time is 100 meters. And then those two things together give me a delta x of 100 meters in the positive i direction. And then the last thing is what was the acceleration? So I know they're asking for the acceleration. Okay, so let me write out those kinematic equations again. Okay, so given these variables that we picked out of the problem and these kinematic equations, which equation do you guys think we should use for uh, to solve this problem? So I'll let you guys think about it for a few seconds and then second one. Second one? Okay. So that's correct. Okay, so let's do that on the next slide. So we've got B final squared equals B initial squared plus 2A delta X. So let's solve this in variable form first. So we have B final squared minus B initial squared equals 2A delta X. Then we're solving for the acceleration. So we'll divide uh, the two and the delta x to the other side. Okay, so now that we have the variable that we want by itself, we can plug in our numbers. We were moving 20 meters per second. We came to a stop. And it took us 100 meters to do that. So 20 squared is 400. Two times 100 is 200. So that would be two meters per second squared. And so I am being both lazy and uh, presumptuous, I guess. So I, I know that this is acceleration. So I'm just assuming that those are the units that I'm going to get. Um, but if you wanted to be more careful, you could write, this was 20 meters per second squared, and then two times 100 meters. So on top, you would have meter per second, meter squared per second squared. And then on the bottom, you would have meter. So this meter would cancel with that meter and you get meter per second squared. So I'm fine with uh, 
as long as you solve it and for the variable correctly, then as, assuming you plug in the values where they're supposed to go, then all of your units will work out. So any questions about this kind of problem solving process? So um, maybe it seems a little easy right now, but uh, when we start doing two-dimensional kinematics, it's gonna be really important to uh, know, for example, this velocity is in the X or in the Y direction. And then how do I use things that are from both X and Y directions to solve the problem? So, and we'll talk about that next week. So the homework from this week, there'll be quite a few of these kind of problems. Okay. So next we'll talk about those, we'll go back to the graphs that we were talking about. So if we have the situation where we throw a ball straight up in the air, so. Let's look at what the graph of the position of the ball with respect to time. And I guess we'll do the Y position. Okay. So, I mean, just in your head, you know what throwing something straight up looks like, right? It goes up and then it comes back down. So if you plot that as a function of time, what it's going to look like is a parabola. So pretend that this is pretty and that I am a good artist. Now, um, I guess maybe this graph on its own is not super exciting. But what we can do is we remember that we said that velocity is delta x, I guess in this case, delta y over delta t. And we said that this was a slope. So when something is a straight line, finding the slope is easy. Uh, but when we have uh, something that's curved like this, it's maybe not so trivial. And so this, the slope of something that isn't a straight line, what they mean is to find the tangent. And what that means is find, uh, let me see if I can draw this. That's not what I want. Okay, the answer is no. Um, so a line that's tangent to a curve just means, uh, so if we wanted the slope say at this point, the tangent line is you take the slope at that specific point and then you uh, place it uh, parallel to the slope of that line, but you extend it in both directions. Um, so this starts getting into a bit of calculus. So uh, you won't necessarily have to find these tangent lines, but 
uh, conceptually, it's important to understand this. So um, as you build these different uh, slopes, eventually you'll get to this point here. Okay, uh, so conceptually, what do you guys think the slope of the uh, tangent line is gonna be at the top of this parabola? Zero, right? So it'll be a flat line. So this slope is zero. And so what that's telling you is that the velocity at the top of your throw is zero. Okay, so this is very important conceptually and something that people struggle with understanding. So when you are, as soon as you've thrown it, you're, the only thing that's interacting with that uh, object is gravity, okay? So as it's going up, it's slowly losing its velocity because the acceleration due to gravity is pointing in the opposite direction, right? So as, uh, I guess in, we'll call this the green half. In the green half of this parabola, your velocity is pointing up and the acceleration is pointing down. So eventually, uh, if you think about those kinematic equations, your, you take your acceleration You take your acceleration and you multiply it by time. Eventually that's gonna be bigger than the initial velocity that you started with. And so that's why eventually you'll get a velocity of zero, okay? Then in the blue half of your parabola, your acceleration will still be down but now your velocity will also be down. And so that's, you also see that in the signs of these slopes, right? So this slope is positive. This slope was zero. I guess I wrote that down here. And then if you did the slope of these parts, this slope would be negative. I guess I'll write, write this out. Positive, negative. So if we take all of this information that we had and we convert this um, uh, so this was a position versus time graph. If we take all of these things that we know about the slope of this line and how that relates to velocity, oops we can make a velocity versus time graph. And maybe I should do like this. Okay, so our velocity started out positive and then it, at some time in the middle of our throw when it got to its highest point, it was zero. And then at some later time when I caught it or it hit the ground, it was at some negative velocity. So the velocity versus time graph for something moving under the influence of gravity is a straight line. Let me see if I can 
the science work. Okay. And then the last graph that we can talk about is, I guess, this an acceleration versus time graph. So this was a straight line. So we could figure out what the slope of this was. And because it's the same slope at each point, that means that the acceleration is going to be constant. And so at some value like negative 9.8, we would just have a straight line across. So these three graphs uh, position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration. So these are all graphs of the same phenomena, the same motion, uh, and they're related because the uh, velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph and the acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So some of the homework problems that you'll see will have different segments, like if this was a position versus time graph, there'll be different kind of segments like that. And so what you'll do is you'll treat each segment separately, say, find this velocity, find this velocity, this velocity, then that, and so on. So you'll